Hello Pokemon trainers and welcome to the Victory Road World Cup of VGC sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour and Metafu. It is finally time for the group stage draft so I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I'm Lou Adjosh Kromi and I'm joined on the other side of the desk by Aaron Zhang. How are you feeling today Aaron? Excited! I think you know the tournament's already been off to an exciting start and there are just so many strong teams within the pool of uh, teams left and even just looking at the rosters of all the teams for uh, competing this year there are just so many strong players and you know this world comes also in an interesting time because obviously worlds is in a month and so mm -hmm. it's going to span kind of you know before worlds and then after worlds as well so yeah i i think we've already seen some really great performances and my, one of my favorite parts about the world cup is just seeing like teams that you wouldn't expect to really uh maybe have a big name or big performance really come up and show up, uh, you know, especially relative to some of the more established VGC countries. And so excited to see how this draw goes. Yeah, and I think it's a good point mentioning that, you know, we're in kind of the run up to the World Championships in London in August and to be able to have the opportunity to see so many games, you know, obviously practice a few strategies out before the main tournament as well. I think it's been really interesting to see. We've seen loads of core strategies, you know, teams that we're very familiar with over the past couple of months. But then there are some rogue Pokemon choices that have just been completely shocking and has really kind of made you sit up and take notes. So it's certainly going to be an interesting couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think... The, the World Cup format in itself is so interesting, right? Because there's so mm -hmm. much more nuance in terms of the team that you pick, trying to counter team your opponents. And uh, it's just so different from playing, you know, a, a long tournament where you have to use the same team week to week. And so mm -hmm. kind of the uh, anti, uh, you know, metagaming and, and kind of the team countering uh, or counter teaming for uh, opposing countries and opposing players specifically, I think is one of the cooler concepts of a team tournament like this. Yeah, it's definitely a new kind of strategy. Um, let's take a little overview at how the World Cup has been playing out and the different stages of competition that have happened. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been in that first section, which is the qualifiers. So there were 48 teams, 12 groups of four teams each in different pods, and the best two of those groups advanced to the current stage, which is the group stage. And so during the group stage, you know, super similar to the qualifier stage where basically we have eight different groups of four. That's what we're drawing here today. Determine which teams uh, will be in each individual group. Uh, and just like the qualifying stage, the best two teams will move on as well. And that leads us to the playoffs. Yeah, and the playoffs are really the pinnacle of the World Cup. This is where the best of the best will meet 16 teams in a single elimination bracket. There is $5,000 in prizes for the top eight, and it's going to be seven versus seven matches. So things definitely change when you advance into that final stage, and the competition really starts to heat up with that money and reputation on the line. And of course, if you look at, you know, the dates, there are a two week break between August 14th and 28th, of course, for the World Championships taking place mm -hmm. this summer. So there will be a lot of Pokemon action even after Worlds, right? Worlds is going to happen. That's the main event. But this is a really, really uh, awesome tournament as well. And so, you know, the action will pick up right after Worlds uh, starting on August 28th. But uh, of course, we have a lot of countries uh, within these pools and we got to decide who's actually going to be in which pool. Yeah, let's take a look at the countries that have made it through to the second stage. So you can see that we have got four different columns of countries. So we've got four different pools, as it were. And we will be taking one from each group into each new pod of four. So in each new group, you're going to have one from column one, one from column two, one from column three, and one from column four. The way it's been constructed is that first group, everyone in column one, were actually the top eight players from the previous World Cup. So they've been able to come straight through into this group stage. They didn't have to battle it out in qualifiers. Exactly. So they advanced directly onwards to the group stage. Uh, and mm -hmm. so, you know, they've been kind of sitting, you know, being able to maybe scout out the action a little bit, but uh, don't have to, you know, face elimination immediately. So they've been able to just kind of chill out. Uh, in the second group here, these are the eight best first place teams from mm -hmm. the qualifying stage. So the most dominant teams from qualifiers. Exactly. The third column there is a mix of the four kind of bottom first place in their pools uh, groups with the top second place in their groups pairings. And then the fourth column there are all the other countries who came second in their groups that have made it forward to the stage. And we've had some really impressive runs so far. Seven countries are actually undefeated with three wins under their belt. Australia, Brazil, Canada, India, Japan, the Netherlands and Peru. So those are certainly some countries to keep your eye on as we go through the rest of the competition. I think one thing that's interesting about this format is, you know, normally it's kind of uh, sorted into different pods 
per kind of strength, right? But, Mm -hmm. you know, the top eight teams from last year, there's no guarantee that they're they're as strong this year, right? And I think going into uh, the group stage, you know, some of the top performing teams, especially, uh, you know, those first seeds uh, have gained a lot of momentum and a lot of experience playing in this tournament format already. So uh, I'm particularly interested to see, you know, obviously I think the the number one teams uh, from this first group, you know, they've had experience from last year, super strong. uh, But, you know, will they be able to match up with the teams that have a lot of kind of momentum behind them at the moment? That's true. The other teams have all kind of got their toes wet in the competition at this point. Their momentum is building up, like you said, Aaron. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that kind of momentum will help carry them forward or whether the top eight teams are going to come in knowing they have that confidence from their victory in the previous tournament to try and have the showdown against these other teams. But it's certainly going to be one heck of a tournament. And I think, yeah, we can, you know, take a deeper look at how the uh, group stage is split up right now Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the teams. Yes, so we can have a little look at how everything is going to shape up at the end. So you can see that we're going to have eight groups. In each group, there will be one from each of those columns. So the way the draft is going to work, if you haven't joined us before on one of these drafts, is Aaron has the numbers one to four, which stand for each of those four columns. He will pick a number at random, and then I have four little coffee cups here that have the four different columns in there, and I will pull from the designated column. So if Aaron pulls number three for group one, I'll pull from pod number three here. And then by the time we make our way all the way back to group number one, Aaron will pick between one, two, and four, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes sense. And if not, as we go through it, hopefully that will make even more sense. Yeah, the general idea is, you know, earlier we showed off all the teams, four different columns, and the mm-hmm. idea is you're supposed to have one team from each column in each group, right? And exactly. those columns were separated basically off strength, whether it was top eight from last year, first place from this year, uh, or a weaker first place finish, and then all the other second place teams. Exactly. Well, should we get things started and on on the way, Aaron? Let's do it. All right. All right. First let's go. number to draw for group one. Here we go. I'm going to pick one of these four papers <laughs> randomly. I've written the numbers one through four on them. So I'm just going to shuffle them through. And to start things off, we've got number one. Number one. Okay. So we've got coffee cup number one. And it is going to be Spain. Kicking things off with Spain. Spain, of course, one of the very, very heavy hitters coming into this <laughs> World Cup. And, you know, I think, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be a really nerve wracking group. Anyone just going up against Spain. I mean, they're so strong, um, both in the World Cup, obviously, but also just in terms of, I think, the World Championships there this year. They have so many strong players uh, that are, you know, I, I think going to be favorites uh, to win the whole tournament. Uh, and so you combine all of those players together in a team format and it is an absolutely <laughs> deadly combination. Yeah, I mean, they were the champions last year as well. So they're coming into this tournament, you know, undefeated last year with such a commanding run. They haven't had to play so far. So maybe some of the things you were saying earlier, Aaron, might come to pass with the teams that have a little bit momentum. But then again, when you come in as the reigning champions, that's sometimes all the kind of energy and motivation you need. Captain by Guillermo Castilla and Alex Gomez on Spain's team this this tournament. Yeah, and I think their roster is just incredibly deep as well. Mm-hmm. If you just look at all the players there. I mean, Eric Rios, I think, maybe the mm-hmm. most impressive player in the entire world this entire season, right? Uh, and just so many other players that have top cut, you know, regionals and internats this year as well. So I think their roster is really deep. And of course, their uh, best players are, you know, just some of the best in the world. They certainly are. So let's move into group two and see which is going to be the country in that first pod. Right. We got <laughs> number two here, following number numbers. two. Okay, so have a little look. Be careful to put these pods back down in the right order. It's going to be <laughs> Brazil. Brazil, definitely uh, an exciting one as well. I, I think, um, you know, one of the coolest things is uh, getting to watch the Latin America players more, just in general. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, you know, Brazil. Uh, has some really, really strong players. Obviously, Gabriel Agati uh, being mm-hmm. the uh, manager for that team, but also just, you know, an amazing uh, run, really not only in this season, but in the last couple of seasons. But, you know, to me, all the Latin American countries, I, I really think they deserve, you know, some more love. And Brazil's coming in uh, super strong right now, actually, with a 3-0 and record in the group stage. 
yeah, definitely a country to keep an eye on with that undefeated run. In 2021, they finished in the top 16, so still made quite a deep run in the tournament, but I know they will be looking to go even further, try and get into that top eight, top four, and beyond. But again, so many key players, like you mentioned, Gabriel Agati, the manager, along with Hugo Nascimento, and there's so many good names out on here. You know, Kaya Romanani, we've seen play before as well um, in various tournaments. I believe it was in the Players' Cup as well. We saw him actually get to global finals. So really looking forward to seeing what Brazil has to offer. Yeah, and I think one thing that's really cool about the World Cup is seeing like younger players participate as well, even those that are in the mm -hmm. seniors division. And Tiago Consoli, who is the runner up at NAIC and seniors this year, is also part of the roster. And so, uh, you know, we don't often get to see seniors and masters play against each other at high levels other than, you know, just kind of them practicing against each other. And so really, really cool to see that inclusion as well. Definitely. Well, let's move on to group number three and pull the country that's going to be kicking off that particular group. All right, let's see if it's number three. It actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even scripting this, but okay. <laughs> okay, back into pod number three. And we have got the United Kingdom. Of course, the home country of the World Championships taking place <laughs> in just a couple of weeks. I cannot wait for that. But, um, you know, I think one thing that's cool about the, the roster for the UK here is you have uh, a mix of really, really veteran players, you know, players mm -hmm. that I've always associated uh, with, you know, some of the best in Europe and, you know, players that have just been playing for over a decade now at this point. But there are also a lot of new names on this roster that, um, you know, have really started playing maybe during the Sword and Shield era, kind of around mm -hmm. 2020 or so. Uh, and so seeing that mix between like really old veterans and really new players, I think is always super cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the United Kingdom are going to be bringing. They finished two and one in their pool coming forward into this stage of the competition. And they are managed by Jamie Keane and Ben Kiriakou. Again, two great veterans of VGC. And there's so many notable names in there as well. You know, William Tansley, Jamie Boy is in there as well. Um, David Partington's had a lot of success as well over the last couple of years and sort of... Um, 2018 and 2022 and actually won Bristol Regional Championships 2019. So lots of regional wins across the board for these players. Yeah, and, uh, you know, since they have already been playing in the qualifiers, there are actually three players that are already 3-0 and undefeated throughout that wow. group stage. And <laughs> so that's uh, Sam uh, Betham, which is definitely a nice throwback. You know, I remember, you know, seeing his <laughs> name around way back in the day. So uh, really cool to see him around. Matt Maynard and then Taryn mm -hmm. Birdie, who's been really one of the most dominant European players this season. Yeah, certainly some players to keep an eye on as United Kingdom will keep trying to get those victories. Let's move on to group number four and pick another number and pick another country. All right, let's see if it's actually number four this time. <laughs> <laughs> it actually <laughs> No way! I'm shuffling these two, I swear. I'll, I'll do it on... I'll, like... Okay, okay. So we have got Hong Kong in this group. Very cool. Hong Kong, you know, of course, um, a country that... Doesn't really, I, I feel like, maybe get as much recognition just because we mm -hmm. don't get to see um, the players from that region as much. But I think they truly have some really, really powerful players. And, uh, you know, now they're actually part of uh, the Pokemon company as well. And they actually had a national championship over in June as well. So um, there are a lot of really strong players that did super well at the national championships on this roster. And they're coming in with a 2-0-1 record from the qualifying stage. Yeah, exactly. Nice, strong finish coming into this stage. They were eliminated in the group stages in 2021, so they're going to be looking to try and push forward a little bit more. And they are managed by Or Kin Yin. So really looking forward to seeing, you know, what Hong Kong is going to be able to bring to the table here. Again, lots of great players. We've had a few good records and lots of good finishes at different sort of Hong Kong nationals as well. So there are certainly some veterans of the competition here playing. All right, let's go to group number five. Mm -hmm. I, I will show the shuffling on screen so you all can see <laughs> I'm not just going one, two, three, four on purpose. <laughs> I ended up with the one. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Right back to one. So let's have a look. I've got the number one. one here. Oh, I picked up two there. I'm just going to reshuffle. There we go. So it's going to be Singapore. Okay. Another one of the Asian countries, which I think is awesome uh, mm -hmm. for me. I've really be impressed by a lot of the uh, Asian countries, uh, especially in this year, I think, and just seeing the, the players perform from those regions, uh, especially, you know, once again, we don't get to see them play very much outside of maybe a national stream. And so I, you know, just really love to see uh, all, all the players uh, that we get to, you know, watch during the, the, the course of this tournament. And I think Singapore coming in, of course, as one of the group one teams from last uh, season. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, getting that top eight finish last time, then now coming back into the competition, wants to try and establish that top eight or beyond positioning again. Um, you know, they had their nationals back in June as well, and they've got eight players currently qualified for Worlds 2022. So it's an incredibly strong roster here for Singapore. Of course. And, uh, you know, one of the players, I think, that really had a super dominant performance uh, during kind of the modern era of VGC was, of course, Melvin Ke, who just mm -hmm. absolutely dominated so many internationals, top cut the world championships as well, uh, really established himself as not only one of the best players from Singapore, but of course, in the world as well. So, um, you know, I know that he actually ended up winning Singapore nationals this year as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of the favorites to look out for from that region at Worlds. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing what they're going to be bringing. Let's take a look at group number six. At this point, I'm praying it's not number two because I feel like it's just it's too much of a coincidence. But it's like the magic got, of Aaron. <laughs> you got number one again. Number okay, one. Okay. okay, okay. So let's have a look. Number one. Okay. We have got China. Ooh. So we've got a couple of Asian countries in a row here, which I think mm -hmm. is awesome. And, and China in particular has been, uh, in my eyes, maybe the most impressive uh, Asian country this year. Just so many new players that have really come up during Sword and Shield uh, and dominated, especially the North American circuit, right? A lot of these players have been able to compete in North America, uh, like Binjie, Chong Jun, um, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, Jay as well. And so, yeah, just seeing their dominance throughout the, the North American circuit's been really impressive. And uh, I, I think like the Chinese players in particular are super good at team building. They're always topping the ranked ladder at the end of the season with really innovative and creative strategies. And I so uh, the idea of having all of them be able to work together, I think is uh, super, super strong. And uh, for, for Worlds especially, I'm also just excited to see how they perform. But of course, yeah, so many great players here who have had you know some of the best seasons in the world. Yeah, you're right. We've got two returning managers as well. So really strong establishment kind of coming through from China. We're doing so well in the competition last year and again in this year. And we've had a few MVP players as well. I believe one of the players last year as well, you know, went eight and one in their matches. So a phenomenal showing. Yeah, eight and one in a format like this is just mm -hmm. absolutely crazy to me. And that's going to be Yushan Wang. And so... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, tournaments like this are so intense. Obviously, you're going up against the best of the best in each round. Uh, 8-1 record, definitely going to be a player like I'm going to have my eyes out on for sure. Yeah, me too, 100%. Let's move on to group number seven. All right. You've broken your record now of I have, numerical I have. I feel numbers. A bit now. <laughs> <laughs> got number two. Number two, okay. Okay, we've got one. And it's going to be the Netherlands, kicking it back over to Europe. Netherlands definitely a country that I think, um, you know, it's exciting to watch mainly because I personally like don't know of the players from them uh, as well, but they mm -hmm. absolutely dominated the uh, qualifier stage both last year and this year. Uh, and they went, you know, undefeated three and O throughout the qualifying stage. And so super, super strong start for them. Uh, and they have seven returning players actually coming from the last season. Exactly. Last time getting that top 16 finish and they are being managed by Andreas Escobosa and Baz van der Heijen as well. So really looking forward to seeing how they're going to be able to manage and pilot these teams. And I will apologize in advance for any of these names that I am completely butchering. So I do apologize. I'm trying my best. But again, some great players on here as well. Nick Holmer, um, you know, went six and one in the 2021 season of the Victory uh, Road World Cup and got 11th place in the 2021 player ranking. So they are certainly a player I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the manager Bass. I've tried out a lot of his teams throughout, you know, Sword and Shield, and I've been really impressive uh, at his team building and playing abilities as well. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you know this is one of my favorite parts about the World Cup. You get to see countries that uh, maybe we don't know about, you know, the players as well as some of the more established regions, just because they've been playing for longer. And I think this mm -hmm. roster definitely has a lot of newer players that started either during the Sword and Shield era or right before then. Uh, and so, you know, super strong momentum coming into the uh, next stage here as yeah, they finish three and zero in the qualifiers. Okay, well, let's round out group number eight by kicking off which country is going to start there. And then we will have pulled one country for each group. Back to number one. Back to number one. You like number one. <laughs> <laughs> Four of the eight groups here were one. So, yeah, here's so. Okay, it's going to be Switzerland. Okay. I think similarly for, for me here, you know, Switzerland, a country that... 
Um, I don't maybe know uh, as well as, you know, some of the more established European countries like Spain or Italy. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, they also have had some um, they're coming in right with the buy. And I think last year was kind of a, a Cinderella run where, uh, yeah, they managed to you know be the underdogs uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, make it all the way to into the top eight. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, Pengi Stefan Ma, who is the Indianapolis regional champion, uh, is uh, spearheading this roster. Yeah, I think people underestimated them definitely last year and they just got all the way into that top eight, but they certainly won't be underestimating them this year. You know, really managed well by both Stefan and Damo as well. Um, lots of top cut finishes, like you mentioned already, the regional win as well for Stefan. And there's just so many, you know, top eight World Cup finishing here from 2021 players returning for this particular season. So they're going to have that experience and kind of calm and coolness under the pressure of getting to this next stage. And they're going to be trying and pushing all the way for Switzerland. Yeah, so that rounds out our first set of teams. Now mm -hmm. let's move on to the next step, which is uh, back to group one. Yeah, so with group one, we can't pull number one, but we can still pull either two, three or four. So which number is it going to be, Aaron? You can't pick number one this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't do one. We're going back to two. Okay, let's have a look. Group number two. Okay, it is Taiwan. Okay, so going back to Asia here, uh, which I think, you know, as I mentioned, just really exciting to get to see them play a little bit more in general. And I think Taiwan mm -hmm. this year uh, also uh, had a national championship, which is super cool. It's their first year actually making it into the group stage. They went two and one during the qualifying stage. Uh, and, you know, I, I feel like Taiwan's a region that's always had a couple of players make it to the world championships and do super well there. So it's cool to be able to, you know, see them uh, kind of on the larger stage here. Yeah, they were eliminated early in qualifiers last year. So to be able to get to the group stage, they've already improved on their score from last time. Um, I mean, again, we've had some great records here. Some of the players have been able to get 3-0 and o records. So there's certainly a lot of eyes to be had on Taiwan. And one other thing I want to point out for all of the different teams as well is the fantastic artwork on the logos that we have. That Talon Flame looks amazing. Absolutely. And <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the manager of Taiwan, Chien Chien Sai, um, mm -hmm. you know, a name that I recognize because he's actually been competing since 2015 and, you know, made it to the world championships all the way back then as a seniors and mm -hmm. got top eight in the world uh, back then. So, you know, really cool to, first of all, see a senior, to, you know, player kind of age up and really spearhead uh, the, the, the country and, and captain uh, for this group. But overall, yeah, I think, you know, uh, the players in this group have a lot of accomplishments, especially just within, you know, Taiwan and Asia. Uh, and so, yeah, looking to make a big run here after making it to the group stage. 100%. Well, let's dive into group number two and pick from either numbers one, three, or four. All right, let's see. We got number three. Number three, okay. And it's going to be Sweden. All right. Sweden coming in this year also with a uh, two and one record uh, and managing to break it uh, out of the qualifiers. Uh, they were involved in a really, really close three-way tie, uh, mm -hmm. you know, earlier in the qualifiers. But last year, they had been eliminated in the qualifiers. And so, uh, big opportunity for them to make it to the group stage here. Exactly. And they're managed by Victor Larsson as well. You know, had really good leadership from 2021 to 2022. So, it's going to be well trusted to be able to lead this team through the rest of the tournament. And again, some key players to mention, you know, you've got Pontus Westerland as well. Second place at Bremen Regionals in 2017. Has had five regional cuts as well. So, we know that there's lots of experience on this team for getting into those top cut, top cut positions. Absolutely. And a bunch of other world uh, qualifiers within this group as well for mm -hmm. this year, uh, including uh, David Barker. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, you know, this roster is a little bit uh, smaller than some of the other rosters that we've seen. But overall, you know, once again, looking to to make a deep run here. But, uh, you know, Brazil definitely as the, the first group that we've already drawn from their group. It's, it's not going to be easy for them, but I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> to, you know, see if they can carry the momentum from the qualifying group stage. Yeah, there's already quite a lot of titans of EGC being pulled already countrywide. So let's move on to group number three and see who's going to be joining the United Kingdom in that particular group. All right, we got number... Back to number two. Number two, okay. Nope, oh, there's two stuck together. Let's put them back in. There we go. And it's going to be Peru for group number three. Peru currently with a 3-0 and record during the uh, qualifying stage. So 
you know, one of the more dominant runs during the qualifiers here. And just uh, a lot of strong uh, LATAM players here, including mm -hmm. Renzo Navarro, who, of course, was the Players' Cup 4 champion, uh, as well as uh, Dorian, who top cut the World Championships back in 2017. Yeah, they were able to get top 16 in 2021, had an absolute fantastic performance through all of qualifiers and the groups last time. And many of the proven players went to Santiago Regionals in Chile as well. So we have got a lot of experience coming forward, managed by Diego Paradis and Sebastian Solari as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to be able to manage their team through the rest of the competition. All right, that takes us to group four. Hong Kong is already drawn from that group, so we're going to eliminate four from the field. So we've got one, two, and three. Like you mentioned, Lou, I've already drawn a lot of the, the first and second seats <laughs> here. <laughs> so these groups are already looking really, really tough, but let's see what we got here. Let's have a little look. It's going to be number three. Number three, okay. We've got one. And it's going to be Costa Rica for group number four. All right. Costa Rica here, first time making it over to the group stage. Uh, and they went through the qualifying stage with a 2-0-1 record. Uh, and in the first week this year, uh, they actually went 8-0 and against Indonesia, which is just obviously a complete, <laughs> complete shutout. Yeah, I remember seeing that storyline build as the week was going on. And it was like, hey, they're undefeated. And then at the end of the week, completely undefeated. So a phenomenal start for them in the competition so far. Like you said, two and one record here. They were eliminated in qualifiers back in 2021. But here, of course, have advanced through to the group stage. And we've got um, David Rodriguez and Reynold Gonzalez being the managers for Costa Rica. Yeah, and I think, you know, one thing that I really like looking at is just when these players started playing. And I think this field definitely a little bit newer, a lot of kind of 2020, 2021, uh, and a couple of, you know, in the generation right before then. So, yeah, I think at 8 0, being able to 8 0 just <laughs> in any, any, any country, I think is a, is a crazy stat in itself. And so, uh, yeah, first time making it to the group stage, I'm looking forward to their performance. Yeah, me too. Going to be an interesting one to watch. Let's move on to group number five and see who'll be joining Singapore in that particular group. Okay, let's see. Got number four. Group number four. I don't think we've had many numbers. I think we've only had one from group number four so far. So it is going to be the Philippines for group number four. Oh, of group number five from pod number four. The pods, groups, there's cups, there's so many different things. But we know what we're doing, we promise. <laughs> This is uh, the first time for the Philippines uh, in the group stage as well. Uh, I think last year they had a super close uh, tie with Guatemala. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, um, I, I think, you know, a lot of newer countries being able to advance to the group stage. We you have already talked about a bunch, you know, that we just drew. Uh, and so uh, Singapore and the Philippines, I think, uh, pretty cool to see them go head to head uh, because I would also assume, you know, some of the players uh, have played against each other already, uh, mm -hmm. given just, you know, how local they are relative to each other. Yeah, and they've got a returning manager in the form of Enrico Comitan, who's not actually going to be playing um, and is actually just channeling all of his energy into being able to be the manager for the Philippines and sort of channeling the rest of the teams to victory. But, you know, we've already had some great matches. Um, I was commentating earlier this week on a match from Rat Perez, which was a really interesting match to be able to watch. They also are day one in Batito World in 2022. So they will be attending the World Championships in August. So certainly a place to keep an eye on. All right, going to group six. China mm -hmm. is already in that group, so let us see what we get. Has to be from two, three, or four here. And we're going to get number three. Number three, okay. There we go. And we have got Puerto Rico. Okay, Puerto Rico here uh, with a 2-0 and 1 record during the qualifying stage. And uh, they also kind of had a comeback actually after losing the first week. So they had to, mm -hmm. you know, win consecutive weeks back to back. Uh, they did make it to the group stage last year, so they have a little bit more experience there. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, a roster that, you know, is coming in with a little bit more experience. And I think the mental fortitude to come back after being down 0-1 and one is also a big deal, especially in a team tournament like this. Yeah, definitely. To kind of find that great determination to power through after taking such an early loss is, is quite a kind of achievement. It's one of those skills that you have to kind of learn and develop. So great to see them come through and then win their next two rounds in this. They are being managed by uh, Alex Xavier and Jonathan as well. Looking forward to seeing how they are going to be able to manage their team through. Again, a few names on here I have seen before from some relatively newer players as well. You know, um, Daniel Oscasio, who only started playing in recent years, as well as Kenneth Torado as well. So looking forward to seeing what they're going to be able to bring to the table. All right, that takes us to group seven. Two has already been drawn in that, mm -hmm. so we're going to eliminate that. 
We've got one, three, and four, and it is going to be another number one. <laughs> uh, back to your favorite one there, Aaron, number one. <laughs> right, shuffle them around, and it's going to be South Korea. Okay, very cool, very cool. South Korea, of course, home to Sejong Park, the 2014 mm -hmm. world champion here. Uh, but I think South Korea has had a lot of newer players rise up in the last couple of years that have been super, super impressive as well. Uh, I think a country that, you know, just has really, really uh, deep player experience. Uh, Won Sok Jang, of course, one of the most well-known South Korean mm -hmm. players uh, of all time. You know, national champion, multiple-time world uh, top cut as well, uh, as well as uh, Chisok Lee, who uh, has been one of the most dominant kind of online players, especially kind of on, you know, Battle Stadium. Uh, and then Won Seok Jung as well, who was a global exhibition runners-up and then the Trainers' Cup champion as well, and easily one of the best players uh, from that region at the moment. Yeah, a really strong showing from South Korea here. You know, we've got eight returning players under the same leadership. And I'm glad you mentioned Chi So Lee as well. I remember um, watching them in, you know, the Players' Cup online and just being able to see them grow and develop as a player. So they're certainly a player to keep your eye on. We've had as well in the player rankings from 2021, um, we've got, you know, top 16, top 17 places from some of these players. So certainly a team to keep your eye on as the competition goes forward. All right, that takes us back to group number eight now. Uh, Switzerland mm -hmm. is already in that, so we're going to eliminate one from the field. So we've got two, three, and four, and it's going to be number four. Number four. And then we are, I think after this, we're officially at the halfway point in this draw as well. So we'll have half of our teams in each group. It is going to be Argentina rounding out the halfway point. All right, Argentina here coming in with a 2-0-1 record, and they have nine of the 12 returning players from the previous season coming in. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a roster with actually some some names that I'm really excited to see. Uh, Sebastian Escalante, you know, one of the best players uh, in the world during uh, 2017. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, coming, coming back and... He was just such an impressive player, especially during that era, uh, and is actually, uh, you know, two and one currently in, in this World Cup as well. Yes, and Argentina managed by Juan Francisco Salerno and Julian Eduardo Martinez. So looking forward to seeing both these players um, come back. I believe Juan is actually a returning manager for Argentina as well and has, you know, won so many different tournaments. You know, became top four at LAIC in 2020 and in 2019 was able to take the o Oceana title as well. Um, so fantastic to see these players come through into the leadership as well as, like you say, the return of some previous players that we haven't seen in a while. And I believe they actually lost to Switzerland in the top 16 last year. Oh, <laughs> <And> so, okay. <laughs> I, I think, uh, being drawn in the same group here, definitely interesting as you have some players, you know, who have experience playing against some of the other players within this pool. Uh, and so, yeah, I think uh, that always, you know, seeing teams or countries getting drawn into the same group as they have last year go up against each other is always uh, interesting for me. Yeah, I love a rivalry or a chance for redemption. Those are the kind of matches you always want to tune into. All right, that's the midway point. I think it's time to go back mm -hmm. to group one. Yes, it certainly is. And this is where we have to keep an eye as well and making sure that we don't have anyone from the qualifiers in their group matched up again here. So fingers crossed that the fates align and we don't have to do any re-rolling. Okay, so it can only be a, a Three group, or four. Here, group four here. Yep, mm -hmm. one of the two. And we're going to get number three. Number three. Okay. And it's going to be Poland. Poland, uh, also a uh, team that has a lot of returning players coming from the previous season. Uh, three players actually with a 4-0 record at the moment, which is also impressive. Uh, but they topped the group in qualifiers last year. And yeah, they're they're coming in with definitely some strong momentum and some players who have had just really dominant performances this season. Exactly. Eliminated in the group stages last year, have gone 2-1 and one at this point. Um, and three players are currently sitting with a 3-0 and o record. So again, some players to really keep an eye on. Um, for example, Fiona, I believe she was 3-0 and o at this point. Um, I'm trying to have a little look, see who the other 3-0s are. Um, Philippe was another one of the 3-0 and o players. So we've got a few day one world qualifiers here as well for August. So again, lots of players to keep an eye on. Absolutely. All right. That takes us to group two now. It can only be one or four at this point mm -hmm. for this group. Let's see. We got one. We got four. And it's going to be four. Four. Okay. I feel like I'm running a little coffee shop with all these little cappuccino mugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Puts it to good use because I'm not a coffee drinker. Okay. Well, it is going to be Norway. 
All right, Norway joining Brazil and Sweden within this group. Uh, this is their first time making it to the group stage, and there was actually a three-way tie between them during the uh, group stage, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty <laughs> wild as well. Uh, and so um, I think Norway definitely one of the regions where maybe we don't get to see the players as much uh, on the big stage, and so I think this is a big opportunity for them to uh, really demonstrate their strength. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, a little bit of World Cup history for them. They were eliminated in qualifiers last time. They lost to Spain and Italy, two very formidable countries. Of course, Spain being the eventual champions last year as well. So they have had to go up against some of the best of the best previously. And no doubt will also have to do the same in this particular tournament. You know, you've got Brazil in that pool and Sweden as well. All right, that takes us to group number three. Has to be a number one or a number four team mm -hmm. here. So just like what we drew in group two, and this one is going to be number one. Number one, okay. There aren't that many left at this point, so there let's are see. not, and they are all sticking <laughs> together. There we go. Finally got one on its own, and it's going to be Italy. Ooh, Italy. This this Ooh. group is looking pretty scary. I think uh, just yeah between like. Italy, UK, and Peru here. And of course, mm -hmm. Italy, the runners up from last year. Um, and, you know, they just have such a deep uh, roster of players. I think like so many of these players have been so amazing this season in particular, but uh, have been playing the game for a long time as well. Uh, and I think if, you know, in my eyes, they're one of the heavy favorites to win this year. Yeah, they've got three managers as well for Team Italy. You know, such a strong team, a whole plethora of different players. Um, but we've got Marco Flavio and Vincenzo running the manager positions for Italy. And again, just so many key players whose names, if you've watched any online broadcast or any of the streams of previous sort of internationals, you'll be familiar with them. Leonardo Bononomi, the kind of players... Cup face that we're all really familiar with, you know, became runners up in Players Cup three and four. Um, as well, Giallo Tarlau has done really well in Players Cup as well, but also was a Lille regional finalist, Bremen regional top four in 2022. So has had a really strong run and show of different um, successes, different top cuts coming into this World Cup. Yeah, I mean, there are three international champions alone in this team, right? You <laughs> that have is Flavio, true. <laughs> Marco, and Alessio. Uh, and that, like, those, those are just three of really the best to, to do it, not only from Europe, but in the world. And uh, I think big names, that, you know, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be looking at Worlds as well, but it runs so much deeper mm -hmm. than that as well. I think really uh, Italy to me feels like one of those uh, countries where it's like really, really united in terms of just their ability uh, and their, their teamwork. Uh, and they also have the individual player strength to back that up as well. So mm -hmm. they're going to be looking to win the entire tournament after losing to Spain uh, in a close finals last year. And so that takes us to group number four. Yep, let's have a little look. Who's going to be joining Hong Kong and Costa Rica in group number four? It can be only from one or two. Okay, and there are very few ones left at this point. I believe only uh, two left. So yeah. we're going to get number two. Okay, so have a little look. Okay, we have got Canada. Okay. Canada coming in here with a 3-0 and record, actually. So they mm -hmm. went undefeated. And <laughs> once again, I'm just looking at the art for all of these. And they're it's so, so good. great. You pointed out <laughs> earlier, but I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Um, but... Canada, I think a, a lot of players that uh, are maybe a little bit newer to the scene, but I really, you know, have had impressive performances. They, of course, had a, a hometown regional this year in Vancouver as well. Yeah, unfortunately, however, we have just heard from production, we are going to have to re-roll this because Canada was with one of the other groups in the Ooh, qualifier yeah. stage. Um, so I will pull another one out and then I need to find Canada from the pile and put it back in so that it can be pulled <laughs> for another, another moment. So it was group number two, I believe, wasn't it, Aaron? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay, so let's pick who's actually going to go into this slot. Sorry, Canada, you're going to have to wait a little longer because India is going to take that slot. Ooh, now this, like, India, I think is really cool, especially because, you know, we don't have official VGC events there at all. So uh, for them to have made it through so far is awesome. And don't sleep on India because they have had an insane record through the qualifying stage. They're actually 22 and 2 in sets, which I think is just uh, absolutely mind-blowing statistic. So uh, obviously went 3-0 and during the uh, qualifying groups. And yeah, I, uh, I, I'm just so impressed here. I think uh, roster let actually has a lot of North American players that you may recognize uh, and North American players that have been super, super strong. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just awesome to to see them on the big stage here. And 22 and 2 is just <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Exactly. Such a strong one coming into the group stages. And just to show we've got Canada here. 
which I'm just going to pop back into number two. So it's safe and sound. That did take me a minute. I was starting to panic. <laughs> Do you want to find it? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think with India, there have been, you know, multiple players that have mm -hmm. been 3-0 uh, so far in, in the group stage. So you've got... Amazing. If I mispronounce anyone's name, I deeply apologize. Uh, Nishant Joshi, uh, mm -hmm. who finished top 16 at New Jersey Regionals. Rowan Hall, who was also top 16 at New Jersey Regionals with a 3-0 record. Uh, and then Vichy, who is uh, also at a 3-0 record and had uh, actually built some of, I think, my favorite teams that I saw throughout uh, this uh, VGC season. Just some really, really cool team choices uh, throughout a wide variety of tournaments. And uh, a roster that has a lot of other notable names like Rogoff, Malavia, uh, mm -hmm. as well as Rajon Ball. Yeah, certainly a good team to keep an eye on. Let's move on to group number five and picking the third country for that particular pod. This one has to be two or three. So Canada yep. back in the pool here <laughs> would be uh, well be. this one instead. <laughs> so let's see. We're going to get number two. It is group number two. So let's give it a good old shuffle. And it's going to be Japan. Oh. <laughs> Now that's one of the heavy hitters for sure. I think, you know, oh, yeah. when, when you look at how the seeding works, right? Like you would expect Japan to be one of the top seeds, but they actually didn't get a buy coming in from uh, last season. And I mean, this, this roster is just so deep, so many strong accomplished mm -hmm. players. Actually, at least 10 of your players are going to the world championships this year. Uh, they're three and oh so far. Um, but it's like last year, they had a strong start, but then kind of faltered out uh, in the group stage last year. And, you know, of course, this roster with so many well-known players, uh, including Shoma Honami, who was the 2015 national world champion, uh, as well as Hirofumi Kumura, who was the runner-up mm -hmm. at the last world championship that we had, as well as a uh, multiple-time Japanese national champion. I mean, how do you even begin to talk about Japan? They're one of these countries that just everybody knows how phenomenal they are at VGC and they've got such a strong contention of players. Like you've already said, there's at least 10 players going to the World Championships and they're always the ones that I know the other countries when the pool, the draft is going on, they're like, please don't, please don't let it be Japan. Please don't let it be Japan because <laughs> they are so strong. Um, you know, again, we've had so many different you know, world competitors, like you mentioned, we've had a world champion. If you take a look as well at like um, Kentaro Matsumoto in 2017, 2019, they competed in the Japan Nationals and actually were able to take the champion title in 2022. So there's someone to be keeping your eye on as well if you're viewing. Yeah, either way, this roster is just so deep, right? You have Tomoyuki <laughs> uh, Yoshimura, who got top four at the World Championships in 2017, uh, and then managed to get top four at Nationals this year. Uh, they have Yuma Kinugawa, who got top four at Japanese Nationals in 2021. You know, he's really good friends with Shoma, and, you know, definitely one of the top players to look for at the World Championship. Uh, and then you have Ko uh, Sukide, who was the World Champion, actually, in the Seniors Division back in 2019, and has a had an undefeated record in the World Cup 4-0 uh, last year. Uh, and so, yeah. You know, this, this is just such a strong roster. There's so many other strong players, you know, that aren't in the roster as well. It's, I, you know, even wonder how they went through their selection process. But either way, I think definitely one of the favorites. And uh, Group 5 is looking uh, tough for the competitors now. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to Group number 6 and have a little look. It looks like from the way the pods are kind of working out, some of maybe cut number 2 have already been sorted out, but we'll cross those bridges when we come to it. What number have you pulled, Aaron? All right, it's between two and four here, and we are going to get number two. Number two. So as it is number two, it has to be Australia for this particular group. So I'm going to go in and have a look because Canada, I don't believe, can be in this one because of the, the grouping or something like that. Um, or Australia can't be in group eight, I believe, because they're paired up with previous competitors. So it's going to be Australia for group number six. All right, Australia coming in with actually a very brand new roster relative to last year, and they finally made it out of qualifiers this year uh, with a 3-0 and record. Uh, of course, this roster has so many strong players that have done well on the international stage, including, of course, Sam Pendellis, who was the runner-up at the World Championship mm -hmm. in 2017. Uh, you know, the winningest player really in Australian history, uh, as well as Megan Ratto, who got top eight at Worlds back in 2019. Uh, and then the brother duel of Christopher Kahn and Nicholas Kahn. Christopher, of course, the 2017 NAIC World Champion and the 2011 Trading Card Game World Champion, the Seniors Division. I still think that's one of the coolest, you know, facts out mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then his little brother, Nicholas, uh, who was the World Champion in the Juniors Division back in 2017. 
yeah, brilliant to see the brothers duo there representing Australia. Um, again, they were eliminated in qualifiers last year, coming in so strong, though, with that 3-0 and record. And they finally made it out of qualifiers this year. So they're definitely a team to watch out for. Um, last year, when they got eliminated, they lost to the USA and New Zealand. And they are going to be managed by Luke Cotale and Sam Pandelis. And Luke, being one of these players who isn't playing, just focusing on the management. Um, but in a way, I'm slightly glad because I still remember Luke being runner up in Oceania with that stack attacker showdown to end all showdown so maybe it's good that he's not bringing a stack attack into the audience an infamous match for you indeed oh. Lou we have some oh, uh, players you know who've had really strong starts uh, in mm -hmm. this tournament as well, Mitch Kendrick, who went 3-0 during the uh, qualifying stage. Ben Madigan, who also went 3-0. Uh, we talked about Christopher Connell earlier. He went 2-0 mm -hmm. uh, in the qualifying stage. And then Henry Rich, also, you know, a uh, regional champion uh, from Brisbane earlier this year, uh, also 2-0 throughout the qualifying stage. Uh, and also, of course, will be competing at day two in world. So I think Australia definitely has uh, a pl lot of players with a lot of deep uh, in real life experience and a lot of players that have made really deep runs at some of the largest tournaments. Exactly. Well, let's move on to group number seven and see who will be joining the Netherlands and South Korea. I think it's only from pools three or four. Yep. So let's see. It is going to be number three. Number three. Let's have a look. Oh, it's going to be Mexico for this particular group number seven. Okay, Mexico here uh, had a bunch of qualify or ties during the qualifying stage last year. Uh, this year, it seems like they've added a bunch of uh, really young and new players to the team, which, as you know, I've been talking about, I think is really exciting just to see new players kind of rise up. Uh, but a lot of players here with deep experience that have been playing for a long time as well. Yeah, exactly. The record two and one coming forward. They are going to be managed by Christian Ramirez Lira and Araf Alejandro Vera. And we've got, again, some really key players who have done so well going 3-0 and so far in the tournament. Diego de la Vega and Christian Vargas as well. 3-0 and undefeated so far. And they're going to want to keep carrying that run through these group stages. Yeah, and I think uh, last time they were in kind of, uh, one, of the, one of the groups of deaths, right? So this time around, yes. seems to uh, get some redemption here. But that brings us to group number eight. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's between uh, another two and another three here. Yeah, if it's number two, it has to be Canada, but we'll see which, if maybe it's number three that you pull, Aaron. Right. And it's going to be number three. Number three. Okay. Oh, I've just heard from production. Unfortunately, this one has to be Chile uh, because they cannot get grafted in group number five, I believe. So... It must be Chile for this one. So it's going to be Chile. All right, Chile uh, with a 2-1 and one record coming in from the qualifying stage. Uh, they got top 16 at the World Cup last year. Uh, of course, led by Jav uh, Javier Valdez, who's been you know one of the most impressive mm -hmm. players from both Chile and Latin America. Uh, but a roster that definitely has a, a good amount of experience here uh, between all of the players. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, it's a shame Javier Valdez and Alejandro Diaz are not going to be playing. Like I said, they're going to be channeling in their manager experience. But then they have so many great players. And it's always lovely, I think, seeing these kind of Latin America players come to the forefront. I remember in 2017, there was the Don't Sleep on Latin meme running around. And it's certainly <laughs> something that is true, even here in 2022. Do not rest when Latin players are around. Um, again, some phenomenal runs here. Um, Nicolas Del Campo is 3-0 and as well. Didn't play last year, but has come into 2022 World Cup and is just doing so, so well. They finished top 16 last year. Um, they actually topped their groups and qualifiers last time, um, but they lost to Spain in that top 16. Obviously, Spain going on to be the eventual winners. Chile is going to want to try and take it that little bit further this time. All right, this leads us to the last end of the draw. At this point, there is only mm -hmm. one team from each group that we can't even draw. So going back to group one, it's got to be number four. Got to be number four. And I think this is the one with the most amount of pieces. Some of the other ones, I think, are already kind of locked in if you want to do the maths. But let's keep it nice and exciting for this one. And it's going to be Uruguay. Okay, Uruguay coming up here. This is their first time making it to the group stage. They were eliminated in the qualifying stage last year. Uh, they lost to Spain and Italy. And those are two countries you, you really have no shame losing to, right? The, the two finalists <laughs> from last year. So uh, this time around, they, they will actually have a chance at redemption uh, going up against Spain once again here. But uh, yeah, this is a roster that um, I think, you know, players that maybe haven't had as much of a chance to compete in real life tournaments. And so it's a nice mm -hmm. opportunity for them to showcase their playing abilities outside of just live tournaments. 
Exactly. And their manager, Gonzalo Sintas, um, is going to be captaining this team. They were runner up at a special event um, in Paraguay in 2019. They competed at World Day 1 in 2019 as well. So certainly a very strong year for them. And that was carried over into 2020 as well with a top eight special event in Santiago, Chile. So looking forward to seeing what them as a manager is going to be able to bring to this tournament as well as captaining through the rest of their team. All right, group two, there are only two one teams left, I believe. Let's have a little look. Yep, you're right. There's only two. Which one is it going to be? The United States. Okay, the U.S. <laughs> coming in this year, finally getting drawn. Uh, and so, yeah, this is definitely, uh, I, I think, a, a hard group uh, for, mm -hmm. for the U.S., honestly. And I think, you know, like, the there's just a lot of players here with experience uh on on the u.s roster i mean this is a roster led i think pretty much everyone has performed like incredibly well this season multiple players who are in day two of the world championships this year mm -hmm. uh and it's led by uh, justin burns and jeremy odena uh which uh, are the same two leaders from last year yeah exactly there's so many names on here we could talk about for an extended period of time you know jeremy rodriguez um 2018 naic champion we've got um, joseph ugate as well who has always done you know, so well, Portland regional champion in 2020. But then I know that Joe has been working so hard to try and add international champion to that trophy cabinet and has done well to get, you know, so many top finishes. Um, those top four finishes at NAIC and EUIC. So there's someone to be watching out for, not only in this competition, but going forward to London Worlds as well. Yeah, and of course, some players here who did super, super well during 2021. Uh, Sohai mm -hmm. Mufti, who had a 6-1 and one record, uh, and Z Castiglia, or C Castiglia, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> mistakes there, for a 6-1 and one record as well. Uh, and then Nils Dunlap with uh, multiple mm -hmm. top cuts in 2017 and 2018. Yeah, exactly. So many great players from the United States. And again, just touching back to their logo, not only do they have a Battle of the World Cup on their hands, but they have the Battle of the Gastrodons. You know, is it the pink one or the blue one that you prefer? Both are in the logo. So they're just having a stalemate on this one. All right. Group number three only can be a number four team. Yes, that is true. So number four, let's have a look who it's going to be. And it's going to be Ecuador for group number three. Okay, Ecuador here, same one and one and one record coming in from last year. And it's the same, you know, nine of the 12 players uh, returning from last year, of course, captained by none other than Paul Ruiz, the world champion from mm -hmm. 2018 and a semifinalist from 2017. Uh, and I, I think, you know, obviously having Paul as your leader is so, so big for a tournament like this. But uh, they're coming in, yeah, with uh, deep experience and a lot of players who are returning from last year. So these guys have worked together uh, before. Yeah, exactly. And we've got a few players here qualified for, you know, day two world, such as Juan Ortiz. Um, and again, some three and O records. Um, Gallo Obia has got three and O so far in 2022. Um, you know, coming off a not so great record in 2021. So they've come back, redeemed themselves, established themselves as a player to keep an eye on. And then Juan Farias as well is undefeated in the World Cup so far. So really interesting to keep an eye on a few players here from Ecuador. All right, that takes us to group four, and this has to be the last remaining group one team. Okay, so last but not least, if you haven't already been able to figure it out, it is going to be Thailand. We definitely have, this is a really cool group for me, I think, just because, uh, you know, we don't see as much maybe official play um, from, you know, regions like India and Costa, uh, Costa Rica, uh, and, and Thailand coming in as, you know, a... A number one seed with great experience last year, top eight, uh, obviously. Uh, they ended up losing to uh, Korea, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, they, they've got some players who have, once again, just uh, deep experience that will be playing at the World Championships this year. Yeah, and they had their first ever live event this year as well. Nationals back in May, that I believe Nontaro was the champion of there. Um, but again, we're taking a little look. We've got some world qualifying positions here. In 2021, they obviously got to top eight. They have that phenomenal run, uh, but they lost to Korea, I believe, in top they've they've lost previously in some of the the top matches uh, but they dominated their qualifiers and the group stages so it really was when they got through to that knockout stage they just fell a little bit short so thailand are going to want to be trying to establish themselves coming back into this competition and trying to go all the way okay that takes us to group five okay so group number five has to be number three and it is going to be germany Ooh, that is an exciting one. I think Germany also, 
you know, when I think of the titans of European countries uh, for, for VGC, you know, it was Spain, Italy, Germany historically have had so many strong players. And so uh, Germany also, I think, an incredibly deep roster. They were actually eliminated by the UK last year, uh, mm-hmm. but beat them in the qualifiers for redemption this year. And yeah, uh, they, of course, just have a roster with tons of uh, deep experiences. I, I think a lot more veteran players on this roster relative to some of the other countries out there. Yeah, and it's nice to see Marcus Stasso coming in as a new manager for 2022 for Germany. Um, again, so many great finishes for Marcus, you know, top four in Worlds 2016. Um, lots of, I think it's three international top eight finishes as well, um, and two times national wins. So phenomenal leadership coming out there and so many great players on here. Feb C. Oskan is a great player to keep an eye out of. Champions Cup, um, which I believe was one of the grassroots tournaments, was able to come first with a huge, huge player pool for that. And again, so many world qualifiers here as well. Jonas Regal is a two-time champion. I believe it was Bremen Regionals and then Bilbao's special event most recently in 2022 was able to take that title um, as well as lots of other players. Barish at Josh as well in there. I have to mention him, you know, otherwise he'll be very grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, yeah, it's a player a roster with, you know, a lot of uh, kind of older players as well, uh, like FaZe uh, and Fevzi as well, yeah. uh, two, two super accomplished players from that region. Uh, and then Maurice Uteg, who actually won Bremen Regionals this year as well. So, yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, newer faces here, which I think is really cool. Uh, a bunch of players on this roster started playing in 2020, but of course, some very old familiar faces from the region as well. Exactly. Well, let's move on to group number six. Um, I believe this has already been kind of worked out as well. Group number four, it has to be the way it all works out. France for group number six. All right. So France here, similar record, 1-1-1. One, 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 uh, and they managed to qualify into the top 16 by surviving uh, the group of death here. Uh, and so mm-hmm. uh, I think France is really interesting because they've had some players who have really done super well uh, in you know live tournaments this year. Of course, Thomas uh, winning regionals uh, and then getting top cuts at so many other tournaments as well as just, you know, consistent top 16s across the board, both at ICs and at, at regionals as well. Uh, and then... Um, a lot of other players who, yeah, have have made it really deep in in, ter- in terms of like the European regionals this year. Yes, and managed by Adam and Anthony as well. And I mean, the reason we had to pick France for this group is because they're not allowed to go into Group 7 because they were paired up with Mexico in the qualifiers. And I don't think that's a match they would really want to repeat as Mexico completely destroyed them with all eight victories for Mexico. So I think France are quite happy that we're able to move it um, and put them into group six, but it's still going to be a formidable competition for them. But I know they're going to want to come back and prove themselves really strong. Absolutely. I mean, for them to get redemption after, mm-hmm. you know, getting blown out by Mexico, I think it itself is impressive enough. So, you know, congratulations to them for making it here. And I'm sure they're they're looking forward to, to showing off their strength in the group stage. Exactly. So let's have a little look at group number seven. Again, it has to be the last one in my coffee cup. It's going to be Vietnam. Okay, Vietnam coming up here, definitely a region that I personally, you know, don't know of as well, um, mainly because, you know, we don't have like a live official mm-hmm. circuit there. And so I think this is really exciting for me, uh, just because I think, you know, it's really, once again, a chance for these players to be able to prove themselves on the world stage. But they actually qualified for the group stage as well last year, uh, despite, you know, yeah, not even having an official event in the region. Uh, and they went 2-0-1 during the qualifying stage. Exactly. Um, you know, qualified through, they got eliminated in the group stages last time, two and one record at this point. Um, and again, nice to see a lot of players start to come through to the forefront here. Um, their, one of their managers, um, Saeed, actually got top 16 at the Malaysia Regionals in 2019. And previously before that, at the Harrogate Regionals in 2018, was able to get top 64. So some of these names that may be newer, but some of them we have certainly seen before. Yeah, and one player in particular, Long Nguyen, aka mm. Sportaholic21, actually had an undefeated run both last wow. year and currently this year as well. So 4 0 in the World Cup last year, 2 0 currently. So 6 0 combined between the two years. And I think definitely uh, a player you're going to want to watch out for as they compete in the group stage. Exactly. Lots of names to look out for. Well, we're coming towards the end of the draw. There is only one country left to be able to pull from for group number eight. And we already talked about them a little bit earlier on, but then they had to be repulled. It's going to be Canada, last but not least. Okay, we got a little sneak peek of Canada earlier when we had drawn them. <laughs> but yeah, they had topped the qualifying group uh, this year. Uh, of course, uh, had Vancouver Regionals in their hometown or home country as well. Uh, and a player or a roster that has just yeah a lot of players that have had uh, good performances throughout really the last couple of years. Uh, and overall a lot of players who have also yeah top cut multiple regionals this year 
Yeah, exactly. Managed by um, Jean-Marc Cabert, Nick Jorgensen and William Patterson as well. So three managers to take through quite a strong roster here. Um, again, lots of different accomplishments. Uh, Marcus Dion is undefeated so far in the World Cup. And again, lots of players here with lots of different top cup finishes. Again, um, for example... We've got as well in seniors division, some players coming up as well. Kylan Van Severin was first to Indian Openness Regionals in seniors division. And we talked about that a little bit previously. And I think it's always nice to see these players from other divisions we don't normally get to feature coming through, learning from the masters, also teaching masters a few different tricks. And together it makes for a really well-rounded team. That's it. We've drawn all of the groups, Lou. And so, <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh... Definitely, definitely really cool to see how things shake up. Like, I, I think for me, you know, group three and group five look really, really uh, tricky in particular. Mm -hmm. I think, like, um, I'm just trying to think, you know, which groups are really the group of death. But, you know, in, in, in a tournament like this, honestly, it's there's like there's so many other factors that go into other than just pure strength of the players, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. so teams that work are more cohesive in preparation and in scouting uh, can, you know, gain an advantage rather than just eight yeah, players on a team that maybe are really strong, but don't work together as much. But yeah, a lot of really strong groups here in the, the end of the draw. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a few rivalries I can see in that group number three. I'm sure UK and Italy are going to want to try and assert dominance in kind of <laughs> Europe, which is going to be the best European one. They're players that will be so familiar with playing each other at, you know, local events and regionals um, and things like that. And again, I think group number five is the one I really have my eye on. Some really strong competitors there. You know, Singapore coming so strong from the previous year and then Japan in there amongst Germany and the Philippines. Oh, that's going to be a tense one for sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, now we're at the point where it doesn't really matter what your record was last year. It doesn't matter what your record mm -hmm. was coming in from the qualifying stage, right? This is kind of like a brand new tournament. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, it'll be exciting to see how things shake up. And we're going to, yeah, get started with this pretty soon. And I'm just really eager to watch the games. I'm sure the managers right now are already scurrying about being like, <laughs> right, let's strategize. What teams are we going to do? Um, you know, please don't blame us for the draw if you're not too happy. You know, it's it's Pokemon. You have to establish your, yourself in the best way possible. Um, and of course, Victory Road putting on such a fantastic World Cup. You can check them out on all their social medias as well and get involved with all of the action back home. I think one of the lovely things Victory Road does is have fantastic websites. You can see at the bottom there, www.worldcupvgc.com, where you can get all the information, all the intel about the teams, the players, the structure, the way the tournament is shaping out, all the kind of statistics you could dream of are available at that website, as well as their Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and Discord placements as well. So please do engage with Victory Road. They're a fantastic resource for our community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just everything from organization to production to how professional they are. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to work with them. We're so grateful that, you know, they can host us and host this entire tournament just in general. Uh, and yeah, it's only going to get more exciting from here. We already have had a lot of exciting battles. We're going to, you know, really kick off the group stage, have Worlds, mm -hmm. obviously, the events of the year, and then come back and then <laughs> finish off uh, the World Cup as well. So we've got a lot of great Pokemon coming up in the next month and a half or so. Yeah, that's true. It will not be a dry spell for Pokemon action. No matter where you're like, kind of looking, you're going to be able to find some great Pokemon play. Um, but thank you so much, Aaron, for joining me and doing this draft with me. It's not often that we get to be behind the desk together, so it was a lovely opportunity. Yeah. And great to see the history starting to be made putting these pools together. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. Thanks to Victory Road once again for organizing it. Thank you to all of you for watching. And I'm sure a lot of y'all were eager to see what groups you were drawn in. I think for me personally, you know, I, I know some of these countries and players really well. Some of these countries and players I don't know nearly as well. And so I, I love watching this because it's an opportunity for a lot of these countries to once again, like make a name for themselves. And uh, I, I think, you know, I wouldn't just bet on the, the the top countries with the best names on it. Right. Because I think a lot of these mm -hmm. uh, maybe smaller regions work a lot more cohesively and put in more preparation, more time into it. And so I'm really rooting for everyone here. And I can't wait to see uh, how it plays out. Yeah, me neither. So keep an eye on all the social media so you know when all the matches are happening, you don't miss any of those broadcasts. Um, but that's it for today. And if you keep an eye, like I said, on all those socials, you won't miss any of the action. So stay tuned for more Pokemon action over the next couple of weeks. And goodbye for now.